So for the material this week, uh, we actually go back to, we should go back to chapter 10 and cover something that we kind of skipped over, which is RC circuits with full-time dependence. It, um, we did talk about RC uh, or circuits that have capacitors in it, but we made sure to only cover either transient behavior, what happens at time equals zero, or asymptotic behavior, what happens as time goes to infinity. So when you actually cover this section in detail, those two end points are not the only points that you are concerned with. You, it, it, now they actually write down the, um, the full differential equation and work out a solution to that differential equation. So they are going through the uh, separation. Uh, well, this is the differential equation solved for the derivative. And this is the separation of variables a step, integrating from zero to some charge Q, zero time to some time T. And all of this is worked out in detail. I hope um, what you see in the textbook makes sense. If it makes sense, great. If you feel like you might need a little help, then this is covered in the lecture here. I go through the detailed analysis of uh, charging cycle. So that's what you can um, compare to if uh, um, these lines don't make immediate sense. So I want you to pay attention to this uh, time constant, um, which, uh, which is a, 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 a quick way to characterize circuits like this. And they explain what uh, time constant is. And I also mentioned it in the lecture a little bit. And you have some conceptual questions that refer to the time constant. So take a look at it, make sure you understand um, why this quantity, uh, resistance times capacitance, ends up being important. Um, so this is, uh, again, going back to chapter 10, kind of um, things that we could have covered back then, but this is the order I decided to go in and uh, put together all the time dependent circuit stuff. So once you have done, once you have looked at chapter or section 10.5 and looked at what R how RC circuits behave and looked at the mathematics that go into analyzing RC circuit, then the, the register inductor circuit will look very familiar. It's uh, another time dependent circuit. Um, we're actually kind of waiting for this to, so that that's why we have covered the RC circuit until now. And um, as you look through it, so you can go through the same derivation here. Hopefully this uh, kind of differential equation looks familiar. And I guess they are not doing detailed solution here, but it's the same technique that you are using. You solve it for the derivative and you do separation of variable. In fact, if you look at it carefully, the RL, the inductor register circuits are actually a little bit simpler because with the capacitors, you actually have to go through another step to write down current is equal to dqdt. This circuit just starts out with the current as the main dynamical quantity and you just stick with it, you don't have to worry about charge. So, um, so you know, inductors do involve more uh, physical concepts. You have to know far this law to understand the physics behind how it works. But once you just take for granted that you have an inductor that has this kind of uh, behavior, then actually mathematics of it ends up being simpler. Um, so, so those two, um, learning to handle those two things, that's probably the biggest piece because um, you have to solve differential equations and you're doing it the formal way. You're doing separation of variable, you're working through, the mathematics, every detail, not skipping or uh, hand waving anything. And the time constant for inductor register circuit looks a little different. So um, also kind of look at the description of why here the time constant is inductance divided by resistance. And you also have a conceptual question on that. Um, now, where we end with in terms of uh, required coverage is the LC circuit. Um, it's a circuit that results in oscillation. You should know how it results in oscillation. And I think this is where the approach from the textbook quite a bit differs from my approach. So textbook is relying rather heavily on energy conservation, which is fine. You know, it's an important, useful principle to use. Um, and uh, they kind of just uh, give this to you. Um, I guess they are 
um, um, you know, they wrote down this much and then they are somehow jumping to this and then, um, <laughs> and then jumping to this. Um, I obviously prefer my own approach, which you can see here. And, uh, you know, even my approach is not, a, it's not a rigorous approach because it involves a second order differential equation. And before you take a method three F, we don't have any formal technique for sol solving um, second order differential equation. So what I do is I have a very convenient guess that I'm going to plug into the, um, the equation of motion for the circuit. We go through the similar steps as what we did for the inductor register circuit. Uh, the difference here is that here, I don't know how to get to the answer, but once I have an answer, I can check it. So that's what I do here. And so once we've covered that part, then um, the RLC circuit is one that I'm saying it's partly optional. Um, uh, complex exponential is what I'm asking you to learn because it's gonna make AC circuits much easier next week. Um, but <laughs> I worded this as carefully. I don't actually require complex exponentials. When you look at the homework questions, you will see no explicit mention of complex exponentials. It's partly because I coded in those questions to be generally useful for everyone. And the uh, covering of complex exponential in physics for me, it is uh, non-standard. It's something unique that I do that because I think it's worth it. So I do recommend that you watch this. See if you can work out the analysis of the RLC circuit. Because without complex exponentials, this is actually a fairly complicated circuit to analyze. So even though the textbook wrote this, wrote down this beautiful um, equation of motion. In fact, if you set R equal to zero, this is exactly the LC circuit equation of motion, and they do basically nothing with it. Um, I mean, they are saying that it's analogous to this, and then just they tell you the answer. <laughs> they don't even plug it into the formula to see, or plug it into the differential equation to see if it's a solution. So, so I do all that but not using this form because that form is a nightmare to work with, but using the complex exponential. And I'm marking it as optional because again, this is not something that I can require, but I think uh, once you take the time to learn complex exponential, then this is something that's useful for any future engineer scientist to learn. So I think that's the overview.